Welcome to He Can Fix Anything. Today I'm going to show you how to replace a broken cable in your powered sliding door. Now the steps to repair this sliding door are the same on Honda Odysseys manufactured from 2011 to 2017. As I was uh, researching online about what parts to buy to fix this, I came up with two main options. One is to buy directly from Honda. It's the whole assembly. It even comes with a motor, which is a big expense. Uh, if you don't need a motor like most of these, the motor is fine. It's just the cable that broke. You're going to spend a lot of money. I'll put the price uh, after I look it up again, but it's going to be expensive. You're going to pay for that Honda name. Uh, the second option that you'll see on Amazon, there's a lot of sellers that are selling universal kits. And it comes with all the pieces and parts and cables, but you have to cut the cables to length and crimp on the end connectors. Um, and if they're too long or too short, your door is just not going to work correctly. It has to be exactly perfect. Uh, after a little bit of digging on Amazon, I found this option, and it's basically an OE replacement cable kit with everything. It looks just like the original equipment. You don't have to pay for a motor you don't need. Uh, it's manufactured in China, but it, it isn't going to require any cutting. It's not going to require any adjustment. It's just an installation and go, which is uh, great for most people who don't have experience in this and they're doing the work themselves. As always, I will put a link for this in the description below, as well as links for all the tools I use so that you can check them out. They're all gonna be Amazon links. And anything you buy, I'm an Amazon associate, so I'll get a small percentage of the sale if you buy within 24 hours of putting it in your cart. You know, I don't get paid to do these videos. Uh, I do it because YouTube has always helped me and I wanna be helpful. But it does help me a little bit uh, if you do use the links below to purchase your parts. To complete this job, you will also need a 3 8 ratchet with an extension and a 10 millimeter socket. Uh, also a T40 Torx bit is necessary and a 10 millimeter combination wrench is helpful. Hammer uh, along with something, this is to knock a pin out, so some type of a chisel or something like that will be helpful. And you also have a pair of pliers, vice grips is also helpful. A little screwdriver or a hook or some type of a, a tool that will help you get a snap ring out. And then a Phillips head screwdriver if you want to speed things up. Then a drill with a Phillips head bit on it. And then finally you'll need a floor jack or some type of a jack with a block of wood to prop the door up on the van. The first step you want to take before digging into this job is to verify that your door switch is off. You don't want to inadvertently um, trigger the motor to try to open or close the door as you're working on it. If you have little ones around that may be playing with things like that well, while you're working on the car, you may want to go the extra step of disconnecting your negative battery cable. Next thing you want to do is to get this door open. If your cable is broken and all kind of wound up in the motor, this may be difficult, but I'm going to go ahead and give it a try. You want to get it about three-fourths of the way open to start the job. Well, that's not going too well. Since I was not able to get that door open, what I'm going to try to do is remove this panel. Usually you do this later in the process. But in this case, I'm going to try to do it now, but uh, by removing these two bolts. Now these are Torx bolts, and so you're going to need a T40 Torx bit, and uh, that'll take it out. This should not be terribly tight. I'm not. Yeah, I've had to climb inside the car, and uh, before that panel can come off, there is a screw. I can zoom in on that and get it to focus. It's a screw right there that we're going to need to take off. And then that panel can be removed. And I forgot to mention that is a Phillips head screw that's on there. This panel is going to need to slide back this way and kind of jostle a little bit to get out of there. But uh... ah, there we go.
That is off. I would say this panel has probably never been off, but what was sticking here was there's a piece of weather stripping that uh, has broken down over the years and just kind of stuck to the body and it took a little bit to get it off. If this has been off before, it would have come off easier. Also, and you'll be able to see it, there are clips that slide out. Looks like this front one broke here, but those also you slide straight back to get it apart. And these are the clips that I was talking about. This is why it needs to slide back before it comes out. But as I was saying, the trim was sticking here and uh, didn't want to slide too easily. If it's been apart in the past, it'll come apart a lot easier. Even with the best planning, you kind of have to expect the unexpected. In this case, let's see if I can zoom in on it. This, uh, the sun off this, it's kind of bent out a little bit and this hinge or this slider actually dropped out. So I had to get a, a jack underneath here and uh, hold the door up and get it popped back into place. But what I've noticed is, as I try to move this door, the sliders kind of bind up because this cable is not pulling out. Now, if I pull with the cable, see how it straightens it out? But I'm gonna try to wrap this cable around my hand with a glove and uh, you know just hold the door up here too and pull on it because if I try to pull it without, it binds up where if you pull with the cable, so it kind of straightens it out. Sometimes you have to improvise. I've got this door up a little bit further. I need to open just a little bit more to be able to get the seat out. So I'm actually using this hammer, the claw end of it to get behind that hinge and then just kind of pull it up a little bit more. I've gotten it this far this way. That might be it. So next we'll get the seat out. Just give some more room to work. It's not required. As you can probably tell, I've not taken this seat out before. There we go. Just barely. Set that out of the way. Wow. I don't know about your kids, but uh, the next step is to take the sill plate out and that just pulls up to get it out. Okay, that simple. And when you're reassembling this, you're going to want to take a look to make sure all these clips are in place before you pop it back together. Like this one slipped out, I'll need to put it back together. In preparation for removing this panel, we're gonna to need to pull this weather strap out a little bit. Now we're not gonna to want to remove it completely, but just so this has room for the panel to slip out. And this weather stripping is kind of an interference fit. It's just clipped on there. Um, and you just kind of pull it out bit by bit by reaching behind. Again, just to this point, just to that point, And then down here, that's all we're gonna to need to remove it. I guess it had a little bit of glue on it. After you get all your junk cleared out of the back, uh, there is a couple cargo hold downs right here. There's one on this side and one over here on this side. Um, those are actually threaded, so you'll have to get some pliers. And uh, there we go, get some pliers and get those unscrewed. Looks like this one's already loose. Once those two cargo bolts are out, then this just lifts straight up to get it out. Something to take a note of, when I unscrew this cargo bolt, this side it came out complete, but on the other side it did not, as you can see here. And so what I need to do is pull out on the bottom so that it goes around that and then it'll pop up and out. So now it should come out nice and easy. Ah, much, much better. There we go. Now that that's out, make sure you have everything important out of here and then fold these seats down. The next step is to remove this panel. This is going to take a little bit to get out, but it's not too bad. Got another cargo tie down right here. 
we'll take out. And then I'm gonna need to pull this weather stripping back just like we did in the front. Again, just this far down and this far up, okay? The next thing we need to do is just start to pull it out. You're gonna have some electrical connections behind there, so be aware of that. Uh, in this case, we have a charging port here, what the old people like me call a cigarette lighter. We have that, and then sometimes in the front, in this area, there are some electronics controls. Our van doesn't have that, but be aware that you're gonna to have to you're gonna to have to loosen those connections. So this just pulls out. And one thing to keep in mind when you're pulling this, put a little pressure on the top part here so that it doesn't come out with it. pretty easy. So as I mentioned, we do have a charging port here, and so you'll need to disconnect the wires. So we have this connection here, and then the charging port connection there. Other than that, there are no wires. Pretty straightforward. You just squeeze the tab, pull straight out. Same thing with the charging port. You have a little tab right there. You push down, squeeze that, and plugs real easy. Now we just need to Slip it out, leave the seat belt behind, set this off to the side somewhere. Now that we have that panel out of the way, this is the motor assembly that we are trying to get to. But before we dig into that, we have another job outside, which I've partially completed. Remember when I said this panel should come off later? Well, now is the time the panel comes off. And so if you haven't taken it off now, um, Now's the time. Just remember, remove the two bolts from here, and then there's a screw in the front, and then you slide it backwards to get it out of these clips, and it'll come right off. And the reason we take that off is that we need to get to this piece right here. And uh, so the next step is we're going to lift the base, the bottom of the door, with a jack just a little bit, just to support this, and then we're gonna remove this piece. You don't have to use a jack like this. This just happens to be what I have. But you want to get under that door, zoom in here, and lift it just a little bit to take the support the weight. First step in separating this, you can see there's a pin. There's a little uh, C clip on the top of that pin. We're going to need to get a pick or a screwdriver or something to take this little C clip off from here. And then we're going to get underneath. On this side here, let's see if I can get that to focus. And what that's gonna do is we're gonna get under here with another screwdriver and, um, and just drive that out of there. You'll understand later. I went ahead and spun that around so that you can see it better, what that C-clip looks like. Got that out. Basically, I turned it to where I could get this little screwdriver right in here and just pushed it out. One pro tip here, as soon as you have this panel out of the way, my advice is, to go ahead and get some WD-40 on that pin, even before you take the uh, little C-clamp off of it, because if this has not been apart before, it may be a little bit tough to get out of there, and so this should help. All right, that WD-40 made all the difference in the world. What I did, I just got in here with a screwdriver and a hammer right under the head of this pin, and you can see there's a, a knurled area here that's what holds it into place. And as soon as I pried on it just a little bit, it just popped down this far. And so we're gonna pull that pin out, just like that. Now this door is separated from here. And it's always a good idea to keep some paper towels on hand, clean off that WD-40. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put this C-clip back on the pin so those two don't get separated and lost. Now you should be able to see the other cable hanging down there in front. That is what was keeping the door from coming open. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my Leatherman and uh, cut that cable so that I can pull this out. Now that I have these cables cut, this will just slide right out. Now it's time to go ahead and take these screws out, open this one up, and see what kind of carnage is inside. Now this is one, two, 
three, four, five Phillips head screws. I decided to use the electric drill because it's a lot faster, but you can use a screwdriver. I think I can just bend this out of the way a little bit. All right, looks like I'm gonna need to take these two bolts out. It looks to be 10 millimeter bolts. First. Yeah, it looks like I'm going to need to take this off. After all, thought I could work around it. Some do not have this piece. I'm not sure what it controls, but I noticed that not all. Honda Odysseys use this little two little blue box on top of the fuse box. Go ahead and put that screw back, that bolt back, so it doesn't get lost. Now, of course, if you had an end wrench, which you know, 10 millimeter is the most common size, and it's also the most commonly lost size. And so if you have an end wrench, either box end or open end, you could get in right beside here and open it up, but I can't find mine. I'll put it on the list in the links below, and maybe I'll use my own link to, uh, to buy one. There we go. Just need a little more room. That's what we needed. Wow, what a mess. Look at that. When I said <laughs> there's going to be some carnage inside, I was joking. But apparently, I was serious. Here's another pro tip. Before you take this apart, it'd be a good idea to take a few photos from a few different angles, especially if this is the first time you've been into one of these. Just, it will help. It's worth a million bucks when it comes time to reassemble. And especially if you get delayed, like here it's getting late. I'm hoping I get the job done tonight. But if I have to come back out tomorrow morning after a good night's sleep, who knows what I'll remember. But uh, that's my pro tip is take a photo before taking it apart. Now, if you are replacing the whole motor assembly, then you wouldn't need to take this cover off. You could just remove one, two, and this third 10 millimeter bolt, and the whole motor would come off. Um, and that would come with cables and everything else. I mean, the fact is when you buy the whole motor replacement, then you know what you got. You get it from Honda, you know the quality's gonna be good. In fact, probably, you know, they've learned from this mistake. And so the new motors probably are gonna last longer than the original and you get all of this, you just have to put everything back into place. In this case, um, you know, replacing the assembly, I have some of these parts, it's just the, the motor that I'm not replacing. And so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull this apart a little bit, just to clean it out. You can see all this junk in here. And um, so just gonna take that apart a little bit to get it all cleaned out, get the junk cleaned out from in here. It's, uh, it's quite a mess. Now that I have these two pieces out and have this accessible, um, you can see there's gonna be some wire behind there. Take this 10 millimeter nut off and pull the spill out next. We'll just put the 10 millimeter on. Interestingly, huh, the nut was not even tight. So to loosen that nut, you're gonna to need to hold the spool. If you still have some cable on here, which we don't, um, normally you would look to see which direction that it's wrapped. Now I can tell you, this is still the end of it's in there. And so 
it would have gone, I don't know if you can see that, it would have gone this way and then wrapped on that side. So I'll just need to make a note of that when I'm putting it back together. Now, which side this went to, whether it's the front cable or the back cable, that I don't know. We're just gonna have to figure it out as we go. Now, a couple things to take note of in comparison between the universal kit and what you get here. When you buy the universal kit, really all you get, uh, if I understand it correctly, is just the cables. And so these pieces, the cables run through, you're gonna have to uh, put that new cable through there. The same with this one, you're gonna have to run the cable through there where the kit that I bought, it comes with those pieces. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind when you buy the universal kit is the cables are two different lengths and you have to make sure that the front cable you install is a longer one, the rear cable is the shorter one. And in this case, it's pretty obvious because you can see the rear cable is a shorter one, front cable has a longer sheath and you can double check it also is a longer cable. Um, one of the other points about this that's nice is when you buy the universal kit, you have to reuse these little nylon pieces, uh, which you know, is just a little bit of a pain in the neck to pop those off the old cable and put them on the new one, Let's get that to focus. But with this one, it comes with the nylon pieces already installed. Doesn't really matter which one you install first. I'm gonna go ahead and install the rear cable first. And let's see if I can get a shot here. There are three 10 millimeter nuts to, uh, to remove that. And then uh, we'll, we'll pop that apart and I'll show you how it looks. So now that I have those 10 millimeter nuts off, we just kind of reach in and pull this through. I can pass that little wiring harness. And it is out. Here's the rear cable that I've already removed and you can see the one that was sent is much longer. And then this is the front cable that I have not removed. And as you can see, it is too short. Long story short, I sent that clip to the seller on newegg.com where I bought this cable assembly. And even after more than three months in my possession, uh, they admitted that they had a shipping problem. Their supplier sent a bunch of cables that were too short and they sent me out a new cable free of charge didn't even ask for the old one back uh, quick response time fantastic to work with so i'm going to put their information on this screen and i'll put it down in the link below um, i'm not a, a affiliate of newegg i just wanted to give them the kudos uh, if if i bought this through amazon after three months forget about it there would be zero chance i'd have to buy a whole new assembly and you know, shot myself in the foot by not getting it installed right away. You can tell it's been a little while. Different clothes, longer beard, warmer weather outside. And so um, I'm gonna get this finished up. So I've gotta tear this all back apart and just wanted to let you know kind of what happened. Alrighty then, now we have everything torn apart, opened back up. I've removed the spool, I've removed these pieces here and we are ready to continue the disassembly. And so the first thing I wanna do is open this package up and just verify that these are indeed the right parts. It's kind of the downside of the way this um, is set up is you can't verify it until you tear everything down, open it up. But um, we'll go ahead and just check the length on these. And so what I noticed last time was with the shorter one, sorry, with the, well, both of them were too short, but this one, uh, is the right length and this one is the right length and so um, we'll know the cables for sure once we install it but as far as this housing goes it is correct could just slip out pretty easily here there we go got the old one out kind of comes easy when there's no cable on it one thing i noticed i'm going to have to switch over is i do have this plastic housing here I'm going to have to take off and um, put that on the new assembly. To take this apart, you've got to stand on one leg and hold your mouth just right. Actually, it's not quite that hard. First thing you do is pop this rubber off here. And then the next thing, there's a little tab right there that you can get behind. You don't really even need a screwdriver. It bends pretty easy. And then this will 
slide apart like that. And so the next step is you can just slide this out. After that, the next thing you do is you want to remove this little roller here. Fortunately, this pin just slides right out. And so you can take that pin out, put it in a safe place for just a second, move the roller out, and then we can put this into place right here. Put the cable on the roller, put that in, and then slide the pin back into place. Just like that. So this is together. Cable, as you can see, is right in the roller the way it should be. That's all oriented as it should be. And then this, we get this thing oriented right. <laughs> it's funny how quickly you forget. You take things apart. There we go. And then this should just snap right into place like that. And so that's back together. Take this rubber gasket, slide it down, and let me just get you to where you can see there's just a little slot right there that this goes in. Slide that through and then you pull this to get it into place. There's another slot in the back. Pull the rubber, get it into place, and the gasket is in place and everything is ready to go ahead and put back in now. Now we just have to put this back through the hole and get this all lined up on the studs and put the three 10 millimeter nuts back on and retighten them. I'll just push this line back to where it'll be kind of staged and ready to start going on the spool. And so as you remember, this goes right back in here. I don't think uh, we'll leave it there. Now we need to change the one in front. Similar to the back, we have three bolts to hold this in. There are actually bolts this time, not nuts. So we'll take these three 10 millimeter bolts out. in place. We have some little clips here that we'll need to open up. There we go. Just have to kind of slide sideways a little bit. <laughs> Easier said than done. All right. So we have the old one out. So same as the first, we're going to need to take this off. And it's uh, similar. Looks like it'll open up this way. A little tab, if you can see it. There's a little tab right there. It looks like both sides. So need to pinch those. Oh, there we go. That pops open, just like that. So we'll slide this one out, push this pin out, remove the little wheel, and so 
we will put this like this. Get in the groove of the guide wheel. Put the pin back in. I don't know if you can see that. Get this lined up. There we go. Got that back in. Push this up. Slip it into place. There we go. Yeah, you can see how that wheel kind of works. Then we'll just clip this back the way it was. So we just need to pull that off. Now to get this in, uh, I think it'll take a little bit of a trick. I guess we'll just go through this way. Pull a gasket through the hole. There we go. And that new gasket slips right on. Aha, perfect. All right, and then this just clicks back together, and that is ready to go back into the hole. And we'll put the three 10 millimeter bolts back in and tighten those up. Go ahead and push this out. I guess I can make my life a little bit easier. <clears throat> there we go. This is a pull push system. And so as this is winding up one way, it's winding out the other way. And so as this motor turns one way to pull this cable out, it's pushing this cable back. And then when it turns the opposite way to pull this cable out, which is opening your door, is pushing this cable out. And so this all has to be wound just perfectly for it to work the way it was designed. Next thing to do is to reinstall this door slider trolley. But before doing that, I need to remove the old cable ends from here. And that's pretty straightforward. Basically, all you need to do is to get the cable end lined up with this opening slot on both sides of these and they get under with a little screwdriver and just pop it out. Yeah, once you pop it out, they slide out pretty easy, and then you're ready to reinstall the ones up here. Next, we're gonna want to reinstall this um, trolley slider, and so you'll put the cable in, so I'll kind of turn this so you can see it. Basically, you put it back in the way you disassembled it. I couldn't do it one-handed, so I went ahead and took care of that first, and this will go in just like that and then we're going to go ahead and reinstall the pin behind here okay once the pin you're going to need to hit it on the bottom with a hammer to get it set into place then get this lined up i just find to put that um, snap ring into place the easiest way to do it is just to slide it on most of the way and then just push it a little bit with a screwdriver and it'll pop right into place i also found as i was putting this into place the cable was hanging down quite a bit the one that pulls the door shut and so what I did is I just reached inside here and I could pull it. I don't know if you can see that. And I just took the slack out of it. Before we go any further, you want to ensure that the cable is in this channel like it's supposed to be. Yeah, you can see it there. And then you also want to go around to the back and make sure that the cable is in this guide right here, which everything looks good. Now we can remove the jack. Now that we're back inside, we're going to reinstall these cable guides, and that's pretty straightforward. Just find the end of the cable, and we're just going to run it through here. Now since the, I'll just show you that, since the, the ends are already installed, it's a little bit tight getting it through there, but it, it slipped through pretty easy. So you just pull that cable through all the way. This just slides back into place like that. And we'll do the same for the other side. Kind of show you how that goes into the groove there. There you go. 
comes through. Okay, so we've got these in now. Now it's going to be time to wind the spool. Now comes the part you all have been waiting for, and that is winding this spool up with the cable. And so please make a note, the larger shiny surface is the front or the, the outside of the spool, and the smaller part goes to the back. And so you want to make sure that is oriented correctly. The other thing, and I tried this out before... Um, before I started videotaping this to make sure that it would work as smoothly as possible. There is a video out there, there, I think more than one, where they tell you to put the door in the center so that these cables are exposed of equal lengths on the inside um, and then wind kind of half and half. Uh, I, I would not recommend that. Um, I watched one video where the guy just struggled and struggled and struggled. And so I decided I want to try a little bit different way. And that is to have the door open all the way so that you'll be winding most of the cable um, from the rear and then a little bit on the front. The other thing is there's a video out there where they mistakenly tell you that the rear um, cable goes on the front face of this um, spool. And the front cable goes on the rear connects to the rear face. That is backwards. That's not correct. And so um, just wanted to give you that little tip. You will thank me later, um, or maybe not, but um, definitely it's, uh, it's, it's going to cause problems if you do it that way. And so here's the rear cable, and it's long because of the door all the way open. And so I'm going to connect it to the rear part of the spool here. Put this in, snapped into place. And then we just start winding it up like this. Just kind of hold your finger on it, keep some tension on there until you have that wound up all the way. Let's go ahead and get this back into place where it should be. Okay, so this goes in here. There we go. This goes into here. And this kind of, I don't know if you can see, this is black, so it's, it's kind of hard to see, but it kind of comes and loops all the way around the pulley on here. And we're going to go ahead and slip this part way on. There we go. So it's on the splines now. You kind of want to hold that tension because you don't want any of this cable we just wrapped up to jump over uh, because that will cause an issue. And then the next thing, and I'm trying to keep this to where you can see it, is this one will actually put on and wrap around. And so I'll pull this out a little bit. This is the tricky part. So I'll go ahead and insert it here. Let's see, I'm left-handed. Okay, go ahead and put that in. So it is locked into place like that. And then we're just gonna wrap this around like so. Get this thing back in the position it should be in. go I'm gonna get that back on the splines there we go that's on and so you can see what we need to do now you want to keep this in the groove it's wanting to come out just a little bit there we go back in the groove this one is in place this one, so it's going to need to pull down a little bit. So what I do, I'm just going to turn this a little bit. I wish I could 
not block it with my hand, but basically that's going to loosen this enough that I can let me move my hands so I can slip this into place, release the tension, and then it's all tense like that. Now, that just took a few minutes, and I can tell you that the other video I watched, I bet the guy ended up, he cut it up. I bet he still spent more than 30 minutes getting it back together. And I think he figured out the problem, um, but just didn't re-edit the video. I'm not sure what happened there. But as you can see, a few minutes. And, and man, having the door open all the way, winding the back half first, and then hooking it on the front is really the, the easiest way to go with that. And so let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and put the cover back on with a few screws, test the door that everything, make sure everything moves correctly. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and take the next step after that. that open closed manually nice and smooth and so I went ahead and took the screws off wanted to look in here everything still looks perfect and so I'm gonna go ahead and put all the screws back in put the bolts in so that this motor is very securely um, held and then I'm gonna reset the open and close mechanism you're gonna want to do that because it's because it all kind of got jumbled up here when the cable broke you're gonna have to reset what fully open and fully closed looks like and I'll show you how to do that in the next step to reset the open and closed home positions on the sliding door, there's a pretty simple process you need to follow. If you had the battery disconnected when you did this job, go ahead and reconnect it now. If you hadn't disconnected it, you'll need to disconnect it for 10 minutes just to you know, blank everything out and start from scratch. First thing you do is to turn this on and then you will hold the open button down until the door is fully open. And then once it's fully open, you'll let up, you'll hold the close button down until it's fully closed. And so it looks a lot like this. It's open. Now pushing it closed. And that's it, it's set. Congratulations on a job well done. It's something I can tell you I learned a lot in this process. I hope you learned a lot and I hope this video was really helpful. I'm going to go ahead and button this thing back up. If you want the step-by-step -step on how to do that, I'll just put it in the description below. Thanks for watching.